Hi guys, it is getting to be a nice day out here on Thursday, March 6, 2014. I would like to bring this ramp from the rock, but as you'll see, it's too complicated for me to do that. This is going to be a rant about my hero, Terrence McKenna. I need to have more Terrence McKenna rants than I do. I, got, I took one hit of this super weed that some young fellow who lives here had at a at a picking party last night about 11 o'clock good god guys I, I i don't know what the younger generation uh has has wrought with the weed they're smoking so i got all uh literally high and mighty last night and decided what can i do with this what was banging around in my brain and it occurred to me i needed to check in with my buddy terence mckenna so i came in here and literally to youtube and literally threw a dart i put in terence mckenna just to see what would come up what the universe would deliver and what did i need to hear last night at 11 o'clock and what the universe presented me was a two-hour YouTube video uh, from Terrence called Dreaming Awake at the End of Time. Dreaming Awake at the End of Time brought to us by my, fer by my fellow Terrence file over there at NNDM tube and i'm sure they'll have no problem with me spreading the gospel of terence mckenna and this two hour video is actually a 45 minutes talk he talks for 45 minutes on dreaming awake at the end of time and from there, it's followed by an hour and 15 minutes of Q&A with one of the great minds of the 20th century. This talk, Dreaming Awake at the End of Time, was from December 13th, 1998. And so this was less than two years uh, before Terrence died of a brain tumor. Uh, I guess he was unaware of the brain tumor that he was going to be dead. Uh, in less than two years, when the planet lost uh, Terrence McKenna at the age of 54, the age that I am now. But anyway, in this 45-minute talk and in this hour and 15 minutes of answering questions from the audience about the state of the planet and the nature of reality. Uh, Terence, as he always does, uh, how, how, do, how does this uh, guy here describe this video here? In 45 minutes, McKenna examines time and its mysteries, the nature of language, the techniques of ecstasy, high technology in virtual cyberspace, the role of hallucinogenic plants and shamanism, the evolution of human cultures, and the foundations of postmodern spirituality. There you go. In 45 minutes. And so I'm just going to have six snippets of this. And actually, the talk, if you go on to this, I'm going to put the link on here. It, it takes three minutes to get into it. And this is what it was sounding like. We're going to start off with a five-minute clip when uh, Terrence takes on the the process of awakening and Terence McKenna's spin on conspiracy theories among other things. Okay, Terence, take it away for five minutes. What do you think of conspiracy 
theories. And this, of course, was uh, two or three years before September 11th, which Terrence, unfortunately, we never get got to hear his comments on. But anywho's, take it away, Terrence McKenna. In this extended metaphor about sleep, I've talked basically, uh, essentially, about the individual's relationship to the concept, to the fact. But there's also a social or a political, a species-wide implication. Uh, it occurs to me that at any given moment, because of the way the planet is as a thing, some considerable percentage of human beings are asleep, always, and many are awake. And so if the world soul is made of the collective consciousness of human beings, then it is never entirely awake. It is never entirely asleep. It exists in, uh, I guess you can hear me. It, it, it exists in some kind of indeterminate zone. And this to me is the clue to understanding something that is personally fascinating to me. And it revolves around why people believe such weird things. And, and why, either as a consequence of the approach of the millennium or the breakdown of traditional values or the density of electromagnetic radiation or for some reason uh, a balkanization of epistemology is taking place. And what I mean by that is there is no longer a commonality of understanding. I mean, for some people, quantum physics provides the answers. Their next door neighbor may look to the channeling of archangels with equal fervor. Or both. Uh, I mean, if this is not a balkanization of epistemology, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, it is accompanied by a related phenomenon, which is technology or the historical momentum of things is creating such a bewildering social milieu that the monkey mind cannot find a simple story, a simple creation myth or, or redemption myth to lay over the crazy contradictory patchwork of profane techno consumerist post McLuhanist electronic pre-apocalyptic existence. And and so into that dimension of anxiety created by this inability to parse reality rushes a bewildering variety of squirrely notions. Um, <laughs> epistemological cartoons, if you will, uh, that, and conspiracy theory in my humble opinion, I'm somewhat immune to paranoia. So those of you who aren't, you know, gaze in wonder. Uh, <clears throat> uh, conspiracy theory is a kind of epistemological cartoon about reality. I mean, isn't it so simple to believe that things are run by the greys and that all we have to do is trade sufficient fetal tissue to them and we can solve our technological problems? Or isn't it comforting to believe that uh, the Jews are behind everything, or the Communist Party, or the Catholic Church, or the Masons? The oil companies. Well, these are epistemological cartoons. It's, uh, you know, kindergarten stuff in the art of uh, amateur historiography. Uh, I, I believe that the truth of the matter is far more terrifying. That the real, the real truth that dare not speak itself is that no one is in control. <laughs> Absolutely no one. You know, you don't understand Monica. 
you don't understand Netanyahu? It's because nobody is in control. This stuff is ruled by the equations of dynamics and chaos. Now, there may be entities seeking control, the World Bank, the Communist Party, the rich, the the, somebody or others. But to seek control is to uh, take enormous aggravation upon yourself. Yep. By all of you there, if you're interested in that. Uh, yep, and I am, I, I have to say, I used to think that, that Terrence was joking there. The thing about Terrence is, you know, and this is, and this talk is, is, an excellent example of that is that he can so seamlessly blend all of these contradictory messages and you never know when he's joking and as he opened this talk with he says what I aim to do here is to have everyone in this room understand what I am getting ready to say differently and uh, so he continually, seamlessly contradicts himself. Uh, I guess the point he's making is, is, is that the, what is really going on on this planet is so contradictory. And I used to think he was joking about that, but the more I study this, the more I, what is going on on this planet, the more I do understand and agree with him that it is, in fact, completely out of control. And that's the thing about it, and, then, and, and that nobody is in control anymore, that the situation on this planet has gotten to the point we are in, in, in complete meltdown, nobody can pull us out of this train wreck at, the, at this point. Uh, and as you're going to see here, as he wraps this up, I might be veering away. But anyway, let's, uh, you might have heard this one. This is, the next few clips are going to be uh, Terrence talking about culture uh, here. You, you know, not just American culture, but more and more global culture at the dawn of the 21st century. So he's going to sum it up for us here and then we'll look a little deeper. But what is the bottom line of culture at the dawn of the 21st century? If you haven't heard this clip from Terrence before, this is a, a great one. If I can find out to start it. That the monkey mind... Nope. I've already... we just played that, but okay, uh, there we go, we, we just heard the one about the monkey mind. Okay, what does the monkey mind, uh, what is it suffering with from culture here? Okay. And, and so, looking at this, and looking at this clash of operating systems, I've come to the conclusion, and some of you may have heard me say this before, that uh, culture is not your friend. That's the final conclusion. You see... That is the final conclusion. Culture is not your friend. I mean, he harps... Uh, the, so much of what he talks about is the need to disengage from this culture to otherwise pull your head out of your ass. And an excellent way to do that is through the use of psychedelics such as mushrooms. This is how taking Terence McKenna's advice, uh, you know, how I pulled my head out of my ass was five grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms. So we're going to let Terrence uh, go a little bit deeper into the myth of culture and how psychedelics can uh, get you out of that myth. Okay, let's go up to minute 33. What do you have to say about it, Terrence? Because what it, culture provides is a bunch of rules 
so you don't have to think, and a bunch of myths, so you don't have to think again. The culture has all the answers, you know. You want to know where people came from? Well, when the sky god got out of his canoe at first waterfall and took a leak, then we, the true people, appeared like ants, and we've been living here any, ever since. Oh, huh. <laughs> gee, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad I asked. Uh, you know, this is what culture does for you. So, but now technology throws a curve. And the curve is that we live so long that we figure out what a scam this is. We figure out that what you're supposed to work for isn't worth having. We figure out that our politicians are buffoons. We figure out that professional scientists are reputation-building, grab-tailing weasels. We discover that all organizations are corrupted by ambition. Um, you know, you get the picture. We figure it out. Well, then, as intellectuals, and anybody who figures it out is an intellectual, believe me, because they're slinging the programming to push you the other way. So, uh, so then intellectuals, defined as people who figure it out, uh, discover that you are alienated. That's what figuring it out means. It means you understand that the BMW, the Harvard degree, the whatever it is, that this is all baloney and manipulated and hyped and that mostly you have a bunch of clueless people who are figuring out which fork they should use. Yep. Clueless people figuring out. I never did figure out which fork to use. Okay. Jumping ahead for the next little pearl of wisdom. About psychedelics and what are they doing in what this are they doing? situation. Well, what they're doing is, is forcing this maturation process by dissolving boundaries which is what they do they are exposing the cultural operating system for what it is which is just a bunch of hacked together rules that evolved over time they weren't sent from god from mount sinai uh, it's just a bunch of hacked together rules so psychedelics in that sense spread alienation but what they alienate us from is preposterous, earth merging, sexist, consumerist, shallow, trivial, inane, insane, and dangerous. And that's what they alienate us from. So again, this neotenizing. So, okay, and we're gonna move into the last minute and a half of his talk where he wraps it all up. He tries to bring this all together and I am sad to admit this is where Terrence McKenna and I unfortunately now you won't have parted company over the past five years when I was listening to this back in 2008 when I was figuring out all of this stuff he was talking about I I, I, I believed in, in every word you're getting ready to say. And I was on board with Terrence. Uh, unfortunately, what has happened in my own evolution uh, is I crossed my own Rubicon on December, de December 1st, 2011, is probably where... I got on the other side of the River Rubicon than uh, Terrence McKenna, who <clears throat> a year and a half before he died was still holding out some hope. Now, I don't know, since we lost Terrence, whether he would uh, uh, agree with what he's getting ready to say. I agree in concept with it, but 
looking back, Terrence, I'm sorry. I wish I could stick with you, buddy. But anyway, try to explain to the folks, I guess, where Hambone Little Tail went wrong. Thing is like the can. Oops, wrong place. Here we go. The last minute and a half of his talk. And so tonight, uh, the thought I want to leave with you is the simultaneous project of awakening and the simultaneous project of entering deeper into the dream for, a, for the purpose of cultivating, evoking, experiencing, remembering, transmitting, and communicating beauty which feeds back into the awakening process. Otherwise, the awakening will be traumatic and demoralizing. We will awaken to a, a, an AIDS-ravaged Earth, to ecotastrophe, planetary warming, complete uh, collapse of any concern for the destiny of future generations. This awakening must not be disempowering. And the mantle that can be spread over the awakening to counteract the possibility of disempowerment is this wish to evoke, realize, and serve the project of bringing ever greater amounts of beauty into the world. There you go. Uh... You know, short of uh, planting larkspur and poppies outside Doomsday Trailer, buddy, I love you, and I wish uh, that, that I could agree with you on this, but it's just simply, as I've said, the more and more I awaken the more enlightened I become about the state of this planet, the darker my worldview. So unlike Terrence McKenna, uh, a year and a half before he died, I am completely hopeless that the beauty of this world is uh, has it, it, it's it, it's over. Uh, we are in the end days. Uh, this powerlessness. There's not a goddamn thing anybody is going to do about it anymore. All I can do from this point forward is chronicle it. This does not mean that I am going down with my uh, feet up in the air. Uh... Like a dead cockroach. I'm going to be calling out these bastards on my way down. But we're on our way down. But I hope Terrence was right. I, you know, to lose Terrence McKenna and, and good Lord, and uh, Bill Hicks. Where are you, Terrence? Uh, I wish you could come, come back to us, buddy. Let us know what you found wherever you went. But anywho's, I'm going to wrap up this rant for anybody who has not discovered the genius of Terrence McKenna. Do yourself and the planet a favor. Love you, Terrence. Bye, guys.